<laughs> Welcome back to Lion Lunch Hour. So happy to be in the kitchen with Liana. I see why she's a best-selling author. Your healthy hacks are delicious. Oh, I'm so glad that you like them. And they're also healthy, which is a bonus. I exactly. Love that. Because if you mm -hmm. can, you know, still have the flavor and be eating really healthy, that's important. Talk to me about what kind of pasta we have here. So this is a mung bean fettuccine. So let's be real. We all want to eat pasta for the rest of our lives. So uh, we have to find yes. a way how to do it. I'm and this cheese is made from cauliflower. Ooh. So you blend mm. lemon, cauliflower, nutritional wow. yeast, and some spices, and it makes this creamy, delicious cauliflower cheese sauce. I mean, the texture... That is cauliflower and cheese sauce. The consistency texture is amazing. I and thought that was dairy free. a legit jar of fettuccine sauce. Like, you would never guess. That's very tasty. That's awesome. It's doing its job. It's so refreshing, so delicious. Very high in protein, too. So it's easy yeah. to make. And those noodles, so you would never guess. The noodles are 42 grams of protein per serving. Wow. So this is a way to eat more vegan, more plant-based, and not... You know, make sure you're getting enough protein. You and you really can get these the edamame, mung bean, fettuccine, you know, any health food section you of can, the grocery store. You can store. also get them from Giants. You can get them wow. from regular supermarkets as well. Yep. And I think the overwhelming thing is when you go to the grocery store, there are so many options and so many things that say that they're healthy now that you really don't know how to, you know, get through all the stuff. The only way to know is to read the ingredients. Then you will always know if it's healthy. As long as you know how to read the ingredients, you'll say, okay, what's in this? So what's in this? So mung beans. Then you know. And you know. Perfect. We're going to get into more of how to read the ingredients and how to shop healthy coming up. But Ashley, I really, Marissa, need to know what she's been up to. <laughs> Inherently, for me, Giselle, Robin, Mia, we get preferential treatment or whatever. I understand that. I acknowledge the privilege. You know what I'm saying? As a light skinned woman, I do. I love Thank and you care about you guys that as a lot. women. But as far as how I feel about how I interact with this group, I've had an issue with everyone in this group at different points in time. In my opinion, the dynamics of this group are not based on the color of your skin. And it really bothers me if you do feel that way. Mm -hmm. Well, can I just say that it is very important and it breaks a lot of the stigma just to have you say, mm -hmm. I acknowledge it. My privilege. Yeah. That's, oh. that's really all. Oh, that's I big. Wow, oh, Ashley, that was, I, that. me too, yeah. I, and I didn't get choked up the first time, but I did just now. For me, at least, and many women on social media, that was your biggest moment in part two of the reunion of the Real Housewives of Potomac. Well, how do you feel about how that resonated, you acknowledging colorism and your privilege in front of the world, essentially? Well, it was necessary, Marissa, because we don't really experience that, I feel, amongst our group. Yeah. But when it comes to the public and some of the really horrible things that my castmates get, it becomes more apparent that this is an issue we had to address. So I was thankful that Bravo and Truly Original gave us the opportunity to talk about it. And I was so happy that Candace and Wendy got to share how they feel as brown skinned women. And I hope that you, too, as a brown skinned woman, like you understand that I, I love you. I love I love everyone irrespective of their color and whatever asinine thinking is happening out there that has nothing to do it does not reflect at all about how I feel about you and really I don't think in our group. Yeah and I, I agree with you too and I think a lot of it is audience based but it is real and colorism has sure. been around a long time and I, I for one I mean I have two light skinned sisters my grandmother on my father's side was your complexion she was mixed race and it wasn't until I got into grade school that I I realized, oh, this is a thing. This is a right. problem. Because in my family, it wasn't talked about. We loved on each other. That's right. You know, and if we did, it wouldn't have been tolerated. But I'm so glad that you said what you said, and the viewers are as well. But they came for Giselle because she didn't acknowledge it. So what do you make of her lack of acknowledging colorism and her privilege? I can't speak for Giselle. I mean, let's be frank. Giselle was married to a very brown-skinned man. Yes. Okay, she has brown-skinned daughters. I feel like Giselle and she, her father was an advocate, a civil rights advocate. He worked with Martin Luther King. So Giselle in her actions and in the way that she's carried herself, I think that she demonstrates that she understands. But, you know, 
I can't speak for anyone else on the couch. I can only really be accountable for what I say. And yeah, do. and maybe it just didn't translate at that moment. Well, she was having a bit of a rough day yeah. anyway. So, you know, yeah. I think it was just a lot going on that day. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, I want to explain for our viewers, because they're probably wondering why <laughs> I'm dressed this way. We both have our <laughs> shoes. We have a Woo! workout, a self-defense uh, segment that's coming up. So that's why we changed. Yeah. But I wanted to bring out Mandissa, our floor director, because she goes, oh. where are your cute oh. shoes, oh. Ashley? I have to see the shoes. Okay, so. these are made. Okay, Valentino, <laughs> he don't like women. Mm -mm. Because these shoes hurt. When y'all said bring some tennis shoes, I literally, I, I did a little heel click in the air. Yeah. I was so happy. Okay. So, thank you. Yeah, we wanted to give you some shoe cam. Make sure no, we yes. did that. No, yes, yes. They, they had some wear, but yes. These are actually my Miss DC shoes that I wore at Miss America. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, well, good luck charms, too. Those are cute. Yes, thank you. Let's talk about Dylan turning to that oh big gosh. party you threw for him. How fun. It was so fun, babe. Uh, we had uh, Twist Events, which yeah. is my event planner, Tilly. We had an incredible incredible birthday party for little Dill. We did a bus theme because his favorite song is Wheels on the Bus. My boy sings it when he wakes up, when he goes to bed. So we decided to make it bus themed. It turned out great. My best friend came in from Pittsburgh, did this incredible balloon arch. And we just had a great time. My mom was there. Michael was there. It was really nice. Was it good, too, to have something, you know, positive that people were talking about? on your social, I saw all of the feedback. You know, in the midst of the reunion and people have stuff to say. You wanna know did a little it feel something? good? I don't read that. So really? I you only, don't read I the only, comments. No, and I've actually set a filter on my Instagram where there are certain words that I do not even see. So, good. yes, I mean, my mental health is more important. Ultimately, how you feel about me is your prerogative. I understand mm -hmm. that. There are many other forums, like blogs and all that, where you can express yourself, but on my Instagram, <laughs> it's not the place. That's a them problem. Problem. Exactly. <laughs> Let's talk about this augmentation that you uh, had recently. Do I look been, any different? You, you do. You're, no. um, you look happy. <laughs> you're blossoming. I know. You're, you're trying to keep your eyes up here. Here. I know. She's trying to keep her eyes up here. It's okay, you look Marissa. great, Ashley. You Thank do. you, babe. Thank you. I decided to do a little lift. Mm -hmm. um, I was on the fence a little bit after breastfeeding my kids. You know, things happen. Yes, and I also things change. Yes. And lifting weights, you know, just my breasts were like hanging down my waist a little bit. So this fitness trainer that I love she did hers and she's also going through a divorce da, da, da. and that was a sign for me like go ahead and do it so uh, I did last last Tuesday I it's a, a week I've had these puppies in and it's oh, great <laughs> <laughs> well good for I know you said you were worried at first that it may uh, hinder breastfeeding in the the future but your doctor said that won't be the case we'll do something a little bit different <sighs> yeah so. I was gonna get an augmentation which is like really a whole restructuring of the breast like uh -huh. breast tissue and everything but he said we can just do an implant swap because I got implants back in 2013 so okay. I was due anyway got and it so yeah I just and really I had 275 right just to give you reference mm -hmm. and I was the C I had to get 500 just to be a C this time so I'm the same size I was right but I just had to get a bigger implant because the skin the, <laughs> the skin had just been through it well, well thank you for keeping it real oh, with yeah. us the real housewife of, of Potomac yeah I mean yes. you can see it on my Instagram if you want proof <laughs> go just go back a few weeks you'll see it all right thanks so much you're ready for self-defense that's coming up yes okay babe.